sound speeds. And if you're a lepidopterist interested in a long pole so that you can catch butterflies at the top of bushes and tree branches, sound speeds. And if you're a hero working in the military or law enforcement in need of a collapsible pole that you can use to steadily hold security cameras in places you can't easily get into, sound speeds. And if you sniff for landmines or do nuclear power inspections for a living and you need to put distance between you and your camera because your life is on the line, Sound speeds. And if you're a professional boom operator interested in a light and long yet strong boom pole that you can take with you into a Western style gunfight, boom. You may not be aware of this, but KTEX made the USA boom poles aren't just used by boom operators in the film industry. They have a lot more uses outside in other industries as well. They're versatile and strong yet light and collapse down into a small little travel package. But before we get ahead of ourselves, full disclosure, KTEX did send me this KP-16 Mighty Boom and the accessories you see in this video in exchange for a fair review. I get to keep them following this review, but I'm not going to allow that to affect my opinion, so you can expect this to be a fair and honest review. Since 1996, KTEC has been producing products for sound professionals right here in the United States of America, and in 1999 took a Technical Achievement Award from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences for their classic boom pole line. And ever since then, they've been innovating everything from multiple lines of boom pole to an ENG harness with an exoskeleton built in that you can use to keep weight off of your neck and shoulders. When it comes to boom pole innovation, KTEX stands out with numerous boom poles available with different features at different price points. Starting at the $100 price point, the Arrow series puts 25 plus years of boom pole innovation into an entry level package. It's a nearly 11 foot aluminum four section boom pole that weighs just over one and a half pounds. The Avalon poles come in two varieties, aluminum and graphite. Aluminum is heavier, but not as expensive, and graphite is the opposite, lighter, but costs a little bit more. With four to six segments per boom, the Avalon poles offer a smaller collapsed length while extending over 12 feet. It should be noted that these booms are designed for one cabling option, internal straight cable, coiled cable, or completely uncabled. In case you're not familiar with graphite boom poles, no, it's not made of the same stuff that's found inside of a pencil. A polymer of carbon fiber is stretched and then heated between 1,000 and 2,500 degrees Celsius, which reduces down to about 92% carbon. If it's heated beyond that, then the carbon fiber becomes the more flexible graphite. Now, there's still both carbon fiber, but the end result is a little bit different. Now, that's the science behind it, but KTEX manufacturing secret sauce is just that. It's secret. Just know it may have been called graphite in the past, but it's still carbon fiber. The classic boom pole takes the graphite Avalon boom to the next level. They are modular, meaning that you can take them apart in different places to configure them the way you want them to, from different cabling options to counterweights. Classic booms are light and sold in lengths exceeding 20 feet. Then a new boom pole was created. Originally named the Classic Pro, this new line of boom pole took everything from the classic to the next level, but changed a few things in the process. The Classic, which is certainly a professional boom pole, and the Classic Pro, which is also a professional boom pole, both have similar names. So you can imagine the confusion when you go to order another modular piece for your professional Classic boom pole, and it doesn't fit, because it wasn't made for your boom pole, instead it was made for the Classic Pro. So to remedy this confusion, KTEC decided to rebrand Classic Pro into the Mighty Boom. So Mighty Boom equals Classic Pro. Just think of Classic Pro or KP as more of a SKU number now. If you look at the model numbers of a KTEC Avalon or Classic Boom, you'll see a two or three digit number. This is the length of the boom when fully extended in inches. It's not centimeters because remember, this is an American company and we're on the Imperial system here. The Mighty Boom series changed this and it's now KP followed by the extended length in feet. If you're wondering why KTEC doesn't just change their KP SKU numbers and model numbers to MB going forward for Mighty Boom, it's because it would cause even more confusion. So just know boom poles with a KP are compatible with accessories that are MB. 100% compatible because they're the same thing. The KP16CCR is the same as the MB16CCR. Yes, the KP cable can be used inside the MB of the same length. The threads on the KP and MB are the same, so the accessories work fine between the two. The Classic Pro and the Mighty Boom are the same. That's all you need to remember. So let's not further confuse it by introducing a new model number for the same exact thing. Now, here's a cheat sheet for you. Think the number 30. If the model number on the boom pole is below 30, then that's going to be a Classic Pro accessory or boom pole. If it's above 30, then that's going to be for the Classic. So that should simplify everything. Understand?
The one exception I found is with the KMBC1 cable. For some reason, at the time of this video, it's listed under classic boom accessories. It's just a short, coiled XLR cable that runs from the outside of the boom pole to something like a Sound Devices MM1. So it's completely compatible with any boom pole from Avalon to Mighty to even other brands too. But let's not get hung up on acronyms because if you do, you're going to have a panic attack when you go through KTEX catalog. Although long strings of letters and numbers can be intimidating, if you look at them, they make sense. The K202 is uncabled, but the K202CCR is the same boom, but with the coiled cable right adapter and cabling option. The K202CC is also a coiled cable option, but with the XLR exit at the end of the boom instead. On some boom poles, you may also see FT or FTS, and that's the flow-through or flow-through short end piece that you'd use if you're going straight cabled. To make things easier, I've made a cheat sheet for you. On it, you can see the KTEC product, the acronyms they use, and what it decodes to. From there, it's simple addition. KP16 plus CCR is KP16 CCR. So if you do order that, you'll know exactly what you're getting. There's no need to order each part separately and then piece them together for yourself. Keep in mind that these modules are only usable on modular boom poles, so don't order a CCR and expect it to work on your Avalon. Here's something else you might find interesting. KTEC booms are made by human hands from parts that are produced in-house, with a few exceptions. This allows KTEC to completely oversee quality control because if it's not right in the hands of someone that makes boom poles all day long, they're not going to send it out. This is not a computer-made product that simply the computer says, okay, this is ready to send out, and it's not. The human brain makes sure there's no problems to begin with. Just to cover all of our bases, I should also mention the KIP or KTEC interview pole. It's a six foot long pole designed for reporters to get a microphone close while still socially distancing. It also holds a boom swinger quite well. Now let's talk about the Mighty Boom. The six super silky carbon fiber segments are wider in diameter than most other booms on the market. Part of that's because it's a six segment boom, but it's also because the wider diameter increases strength. This is necessary because each segment only measures at seven tenths of a millimeter thick, which is less than half in diameter than many other booms on the market. You may think that that would make the boom width huge in diameter, but I measured it and it's only 39.8 millimeters wide, so it's not unreasonable at all. The combination of thicker segments with thinner walls does make it a bit lighter than most other booms on the market, and that's with the added metal from additional locking collars. To put that in perspective, a 20-foot six-segment Mighty Boom weighs about the same as a 17-foot four-segment Ambient QS. The carbon fiber tubes are smooth to the touch and to the eye. The carbon fiber blend is so even that if I ever got a carbon fiber splinter from someplace, I would assume it's from anywhere else before suspecting the Mighty Boom. While KTEC does produce most of the parts used in the Mighty Boom in-house, they also use top-tier, tried-and-true parts when reinventing the wheel isn't necessary. One example of this is the Right Angle XLR connector. At its core, it's a Neutrik NC3FX connector, but they did switch out the strain relief and boot with their own branded Right Angle version, so that's low profile while still remaining serviceable. KTEC takes pride in each and every boom that's born in their facility, and you really see that in how they wrap the booming connector to prevent potential damage from impact. Even the 3816 thread at the tip of the boom is covered with a plastic cap, and I must say, the bevel design is very pretty. The headpiece is easy to remove, and although it does come with this little hex key and extra screws, they aren't necessary. Hand tight gives it enough to hold just fine. The screws aren't there to hold the headpiece on, they're just there to keep it from spinning so it shouldn't be over tightened if you should decide to use them. And if you do, slide your hand over them and they won't cut you but you will feel a slight bump. Since shooting the b-roll footage for this video, KTEC has gone back to one of their more old school designs with regards to their headpiece. No longer do you have to unscrew and screw back in, potentially locking in a place with those little screws and managing your cable if you notice as I twist this around. No, instead they've added another segment lock so you can very quickly and easily pop this thing on and off. I've done this thing now completely twice and notice the cable does not need to move anywhere. No more cable management necessary. I tell you, it's fast and I love this new design. The collets that lock each segment have a lot of very thin threads, which allow for a lot of precision when you lock each segment. The downside is it takes a lot of turns to get each collar on and off. In fairness though, you don't often do this, but if you do need to change out the cable in your boom pole quickly, seconds matter and it does take a while. Untying the KTEC knot and removing the headpiece, even the old version, doesn't take that long, even if you're threading the cable through the boom. Most of the time is spent unscrewing and then screwing on the module with the cable exit. In KTEC's video introduction to the Mighty Boom, Ken Strain says, The new headpiece allows you to swap cables 
in under a minute. And of course that may be true provided that you're really fast and already have an end piece on the module that you're adding or removing. But there's a lot of threads and they're very tight so it does take a long time. <sighs> Good thing I don't have to do that very often. If you disassemble a Mighty Boom, you'll find a few inches of a white material at the end of each segment. This is a type of Delrin that allows each segment to slip in and out very quickly even when you've got a lot of weight on the end of the boom pole. Telescoping tubes can be too loose otherwise they're going to wobble, nor can they be too tight because the friction will hinder proper telescoping action. If you place the Mighty Boom against the side of a table, it'll hold the whole pole in that position. The largest segment is solid and does not wobble anywhere in the extension. The next largest segment wobbles a little bit, but it's mostly unnoticeable until you're fully extended. As you progress to smaller segments, the wobble increases, and by the time you get to the smallest segment, you don't even have to extend it all the way to experience the wobble. More segments does mean more wobble, or bowing if you fully extend each segment, and the heavier mic and wind protection option you use, the less easy it is to slide out at the largest lock. It stands out more on the Mighty Boom because all the other segments are slippery smooth. Other brands of boom poles do experience a similar wobble, but not all of them. The brands that don't have a wobble or have very little, those segments are not nearly as easy to extend or collapse as they are on the Mighty Boom. Now, here's what I will say. The trade-off of a slight wobble in exchange for slippery smooth action is very much worth it in the case of the Mighty Boom. If it did not slide the way it does and it had a wobble, then I would have an issue with it. But it's the way that they limit the wobble silently that matters. All manufacturers make compromises based on the design that they're going for, and as long as there's a trade-off, there's no problem. The wobble doesn't even transmit additional handling noise, and it isn't really even noticeable when you cue the microphone around fast or run with it, and I personally don't count this against K-Tech. Keep in mind that when the boom pole is holding weight, that wobble is greatly reduced. Since we're discussing handling, let's talk about that. If you're wondering why I have a half liter water bottle on the end, it's so that we have a reference for the amount of weight that I'm swinging around. Stiffer booms are more responsive but unforgiving, while booms that bow a little bit absorb human movement error and bumps a little bit better. The Mighty Boom bows less than a K-Tech Classic and feels quite responsive at the same time. It's a great balance between stiff and responsive and flexible and forgiving, so even if you swim the boom around fast, it doesn't wobble so much that you have to fight to control it, but you do have to account for the extra flex in your movements. There's a lot of thought that went into the Mighty Boom, and one of my favorite features lies within the TA3 Mini XLR plug. When the boom is resting upright, the internal coiled cable collapses down inside this connector, and because it's extra long, the cable doesn't kink and bunch up. It remains upright and ready to go again. This is one of those little things you might overlook, but it's a really clever design. The connector plugs into the CCR at the bottom, which feels solid as a rock even if you tug on the TA3 connector. The cable is made very well, so be mindful of that, and because each segment slips so easily, you should hold on to each segment securely as you loosen them to avoid it from rocketing back and biting your hand. One thing you might overlook is the rubber piece on the end. It may not look like much, does it? But I tell you, it's nice and squishy, and it absorbs sound better than any other boom pole on the market. So if you accidentally back your boom into a wall, you're going to hear less handling noise and bump noise if you have a mighty boom. Now, that doesn't mean I recommend just, you know, going vertical with your pole and then dropping it down and letting it slam into the ground. Not at all. But it is going to absorb better than any other boom pole out there. There's one other piece to mention here, the KHCW, or KTech Hodges Counterweight. KTech founder Manfred Clemmy named this 1.7 pound, 770 gram foam covered brass piece after the Hodges effect. I tried running searches on YouTube and Google to find out what the Hodges effect is, and neither gave me anything useful, but DuckDuckGo did, so I put those links in the description if you want to read about it. In short, it's about weight and counterweight offsets. If you screw a KHCW onto the end of your boom pole to provide a counterweight to a heavy Zeppelin and microphone, you may be holding more weight in your hands, but you'll be experiencing less downforce on your front hand and less upward force on your back hand. But your movements may be a little bit slower because of the added weight you're holding. Oh, and if you're curious about how much weight boom operators are really holding, check out my video on this topic. Normally, there's a break-in period when you get a new boom pole. It's either overly greased, it's more difficult to extend and collapse each segment, something along those lines. But I experienced none of that with the Mighty Boom. As a matter of fact, the break-in period for me was probably only a couple of minutes long, and most of that was me trying to get used to the extra diameter on the Mighty Boom because I wasn't used to it, and that's on me, not the boom. To me, the Mighty Boom was solid and unchanged from the very second I used it. Admittedly, I had not used a K-Tech Boom on set in years prior to my testing for this video, but as soon as I picked up a Mighty Boom, 
It was like seeing an old friend, an old friend that had grown over the years just like I have. And the muscle memories that I established when I used to use a K-Tech Classic on set every single day, those came back to me instantly, and it was very comforting. And it was as if I had not been without a K-Tech boom in my hands for years, been using it daily. Now, some boom poles seem to hold a grudge against you if you don't use them for a while, but that's not the case with this guy right here, and I thank you for that. I will say this, though. Because the Mighty Boom is a bit more girthy than the classic, I did have to change up my handling technique just a bit. Normally, I like to rest a boom pole between my pointer and middle fingers, but with the mighty boom, that was a bit of a stretch, so I had to skip a finger and lay the middle finger down. Minor adjustment, but still comfortable and functional. Yes, I know, I called you girthy. I know what you're thinking, don't say it. You can still quickly and easily change hand positions as needed, and because there's no finish on the pole, it does occasionally stick to my hands. There was also a little bit more handling noise than I'm used to, and it did sound a little bit lower in frequency at that. That's likely due to the way that larger, thinner segments resonate, but it's not terrible and it's easily rolled off. I did not tell my sound mixture when I started to use the Mighty Boom, but he was quick to point out that for some reason, he was hearing handling noise out of me when he's not normally used to hearing it. Now, I do want to point out I was not wearing gloves, and he does not use roll-off in case you're curious. But this meant I had to consciously be aware of the handling noise that I was making and make adjustments to try to relearn how to quiet my use of this particular boom pole. But I do want to point out also this was my experience and does not necessarily mean that it's going to be your experience as well. As I previously discussed, everything from how dry or oily your skin is, to how you hold the pole, to whether or not you're wearing gloves, matters. When I wore Mechanics 0.5mm gloves, for example, that handling noise practically vanished, but it's not the way I personally like to boom. What I'm saying here is don't let my personal experiences turn you off from wanting to try the Mighty Boom for yourself. Everyone is different, and I have quite a few friends that swear by the Mighty Boom, and their experience is quite different. You don't care that I called you girthy, do you? See, like I said, no grudge. The k -Tech Mighty Boom video also claims redesigned collars take less than a quarter turn. And this was similar to what I found. If you have a quarter inch screw with 16 threads per inch and you compare that to a two inch wide screw with the same 16 threads per inch, you're going to notice that you have to cover more ground to accomplish the same work with the bigger thread. Now that also means that it's easier for you to finesse in the exact amount of torque you need much easier on the big screw. The screw threads on the Mighty Boom are extremely tight, and because of the increased diameter, it makes it easier for you to dial in on the exact amount of torque it needs to properly lock the pole. And that also means you're going to end up putting less force on the pole over time. The trade-off is that to go from fully locked to unlock may require slightly more than a quarter of a turn, but not much more, and it's only sometimes on some segments. If it's under more weight, like with a big heavy Zeppelin with fur, and maybe it's even temperature-based. I'm not 100% sure, but guess what? I'm nitpicking here. It's not a big deal. I adjusted to these knuckles in only a few minutes the first day I used it, but occasionally I'd underturn it a little bit while extending horizontally. While in use, I wouldn't experience any locking issues, but as soon as I went vertical, it would try to bite me. What I will say is that it doesn't take a lot of torque to fully lock each segment, and when it's locked, it's not moving, which is great if you're going to be using an articulated segment with it. For that reason, I believe that these are the most precise locks I've ever felt, and you can even close each segment all the way without keeping a gap between each segments like the K-Tech Classic. You may still want to keep a finger distance between each segment lock because it gives you something to hold on to when you're extending and collapsing the pole, which helps reduce bite potential. It did take me a couple of weeks to retrain my muscle memory so that I could lock the boom exactly as I want to when I go vertical so that it doesn't slip. It was quite literally on the ninth day I was using it in the middle of the day in a scene between setups when it finally clicked and after that it was never an issue before. But until then, occasionally it was like driving with your brakes on, a little bit more force than I would expect it to. But again, not a big issue. That slippage isn't unique to K-Tech and is honestly very easy to remedy. Using an online pipe calculator, I'm going to show you something else you might not have considered. A 5-inch diameter pipe with nearly two-thirds of an inch thick walls weighs about 30 pounds per foot. Now, if we change up the numbers to make the pipe wider, 7 inches in this case, the walls are now just over two-fifths of an inch wide, and that's using the same amount of pipe. Relating this to boom poles, KTEX booms are slightly wider in diameter, but the wall thickness is quite a bit thinner than many of their competitors. Now, considering that their boom poles are still very stiff, it's quite impressive to me what they're able to do with less material. Look at the K-Tech Classic K230. Uncabled, it's 19 feet 4 inches long and weighs 1,134 grams. Compare that to the K20, which is 8 inches longer but weighs the same. The increased segment thickness makes the Mighty Boom stronger even compared to other K-Techs. Taking all the things that made the K-Tech Classic line great to the next level is the reason why K-Tech has chosen to discontinue the Classic line. 
Why compete with yourself? The knuckles have small recessed divots in them as opposed to ridges that stick up. They're very good at grabbing your hands without scraping up your fingers. The only downfall here is that you cannot use it as a nail file. On some boom poles, you can quite literally file your nails down with it. Again, I'm nitpicking, you shouldn't use your boom pole as a nail file. So what do I think of the Mighty Boom? Well, in short, it's a masterpiece. Now, that's not to say it's without flaw, but then neither is any work of art. Booms are tools, and we use them to create art. That's one of the reasons why I always recommend that you try a boom for yourself to determine if it's right for you. Now, you may be waiting for me to tear this boom to shreds, but let the truth be known, there's really nothing wrong with it. I mean, sure, you may have your preferences, as do I, but that doesn't mean there's a flaw with this pole. It's just a personal preference. So instead, I'm going to share with you my personal findings. My movements are faster with the Mighty Boom than with any other boom I've used, and yes, I've used every Pro Boom on the market. This is partially because it's so light, but it's also because of the snap factor. Let me explain. When holding a sword with two hands, you don't just chop with the hand closest to the blade. You push and pull at the same time. Same concept with a bow staff and a boom pole. You can pivot around your backhand, or you can push and pull using both hands at the same time, which will give you faster snaps. While the Mighty Boom snaps very fast, it still flexes and bounces just a little bit, so you have to account for this when slowing down to prevent overshooting. When fully extended, it's a little more forward-weighted than I'm used to. That's more weight on the front hand. It's still light. It's still unrealistically light if used less than halfway extended. Its weight distribution is extremely impressive, let's say. So much so that it caught me by surprise. Not two hours into using the Mighty Boom, I was booming the scene next to a Steadicam operator. He changed his moves on the fly, and suddenly my back was to him. In an instant, I slid my front hand back and changed sides with the boom, and was caught by surprise because I had never done that before. When trying to recreate this on camera for this video, I couldn't get it exactly right, but you see what I'm going for. Personally, I think the Mighty Boom was kind of showing off. I had adjusted to the Mighty Boom almost instantly and had full confidence in it, so it just kind of happened before I even knew what was going on. It's kind of like having a professional dance partner. I was leading and it felt my movements and then adjusted instantly with the flow. It may have also helped that the steady cam was way down low when I was trying to boom underneath a six and a half foot high room divider with gloves on. But to me, that makes it even more impressive. And let the truth be known, I credit the gloves with why I didn't hear any handling noise. If you slide your hand or fingers up and down the mighty boom, it is louder than with other boom poles. Check this out. But here's the thing, you extend out at least one segment, you're not going to hear it anymore. And here's the big one, it does not transfer through the boom into the microphone, provided that you're using a good quality shock mount that's set up correctly. So that's not even an issue. But if your hands are prone to sticking to a boom pole, then you might want to consider wearing gloves. Just listen. That will transfer through. I also love that the booms are black and dark gray. The only thing that's not is the K-Tech logo and the USA on the microphone into the boom pole. But K-Tech is proud of their booms, and I'm proud to be an American, so the maximum contracts on the lettering is forgiven. But if you do need to tape it over for reflections for some reason, then you can very easily do so with a very small piece of tape because it's all written in the same little area on a tube with a fixed diameter. One more thing. On the new headpiece, the lettering isn't even there. You can hold your hands closer together without fatiguing as quickly, so for easy reaches, it's a lot less strain. Personally, I found the knuckles a little bit difficult to adjust to. There's a point between too loose and too tight where it's just kind of resistant to sliding, and I'd often find that place. But you might not have that issue, though. In, in all honesty, it's not that big of a deal. You just loosen it or tighten it. But when it's crunch time and you're trying to quickly extend or collapse the boom, that's when I'd usually find it. I'm also not a fan of the very thick boom pole diameter. Some of the ways I naturally hold a boom, I just can't do properly or comfortably with the mighty boom. I had to slightly adjust my technique. And I can do that, that's not a big deal. The thing is though, I was actively aware of it. It wasn't seamless to me, which is why I'm mentioning it. I prefer booms with less segments, even if that means the segments are a little bit longer. So I had to actively plan a few more seconds in order to extend out all the segments when going super long. Not a big deal, but I had to be aware of that too. Looking at the six segment Mighty Boom next to a five segment ambient and a four segment ambient, you can really see how compact all those knuckles are. And when you extend each segment all the way on the Mighty Boom, there's still enough of each segment left inside of each segment lock in order to hold the boom completely straight under a load. You should also leave the last couple of inches of a boom segment inside the segment that's holding it. That's going to help prevent breakage, especially when you're using heavy microphone and wind combinations. But this pole, I will tell you, I would actually trust it if it was full stick, even with a heavy wind combination and microphone. But that's not a compliment I often pay. I would still suggest leaving a couple of inches inside the pole just to be safe, but I would actually trust this pole if I needed to run it full stick. But don't do that very often if you have to.
Remember the flex I was talking about before? If you swing the boom around fast at full stick without that little bit of extra in there, yeah, it could lead to breakage. One last note on this, and this is a rule not just with K-Tech, with any boom pole. If you do need to run the pole out all the way and get that last little couple of inches out of each segment, then definitely don't swing the pole around all crazy. Be very gentle with it and move it very minimally. Otherwise, you could break it. At full stick, the Mighty Boom bows less than K-Tech Classic booms, and let the truth be known, many other booms on the market, but it's still flexible, which makes it a good balance of about 55% stiffness to maybe 45% flex, according to my tests. I do think it would bow less with fewer segments. If you look at the boom fully extended horizontally, you'll notice it bows less at each collar than it does over the carbon fiber. It's difficult to find a flaw with this handmade boom, but if we're nitpicking it, Here's something that might drive you crazy if you're OC. Notice the distance between these segment locks between these two segments. It's like four millimeters. Now compare that to down here. Those two are tight all the way up against each other. This is kind of inconsistent between each segment, but again, it's handmade and that's not really a flaw. It's kind of like calling out someone for having a toe that's slightly longer than the one next to it. When the foot still works well, it's a nitpicky thing and it's like, why? Beautifully designed pole with slight variations that make the operator know that it's their own boom pole. A slightly less than perfect application of adhesive holding the knuckles on or the knuckles sitting at slightly different heights off the segments when collapsed all the way are indicators that your pole was handmade for you. Some may call them imperfections, but then two different colored eyes or perhaps even an overly present freckle on your cheek that was even called a beauty mark. Is it an imperfection or is it a unique feature? On the first day I was testing the KP-16, something didn't feel right. Sliding my rear hand back, it nearly went off the back of the boom a few times. Part of me wondered if it was just me unfamiliar with this boom, but here's the thing. The wand chooses the wizard and the boom chooses the boom operator. There's a relationship you develop with your boom pole and you have to feel it and listen to it. The KP-16 was telling me something wasn't right with the end piece, so I reached out to K-Tech and even sent them a picture asking if I was missing something. Accidents happen, but this accident happened because K-Tech went the extra mile. For years, I've been curious about the Hodges counterweight, and when K-Tech agreed to send me the KP-16, I started asking questions, and one of those was if the Hodges counterweight was compatible with the Mighty Boom. In passing, I mentioned I've always wanted to try it, and the conversation never came up again, but when K-Tech sent me this boom, they sent the Hodges counterweight already assembled on the pole. K-Tech buys brass in bulk, but only when producing a large batch of Hodges counterweights. They don't keep stockpiles of it in inventory, and as of the time of this video, they haven't produced Hodges counterweights yet for the Mighty Boom. When K-Tech makes their next batch of KHCWs, they will be making them for the Mighty Boom, probably KPHCWs. But in the meantime, this adapter allows me to use the classic Hodges counterweight with the Mighty Boom. Since the boom came assembled with the Hodges counterweight installed, the Mighty Boom rubber bumper was overlooked and not sent to me with the assembled pole, but this is where both the boom and K-Tech shined. The boom told me there was something not right, and I listened. K-Tech looked at the picture I sent them, acknowledged the problem, and instantly resolved it by sending me the correct bumper for the Mighty Boom. That is solid product development and knowledge and outstanding customer service. Not just because they sent out the bumper immediately, but because they listened when I said I've always wanted to try a Hodges counterweight, and they made that happen. That's why I cannot blame K-Tech for this error. It was a surprise and a simple oversight that they made right really quickly. Funny side note, when this boom pole first arrived, it still had the plastic on it, and I did not see that the Hodges counterweight was already installed. So when I picked up the boom, I said, what the heck? Because to me, this pole was not light, and K-Tech booms are supposed to be light by nature. So it kind of caught me off guard. As soon as I realized what was going on and that the Hodges counterweight was installed, I laughed and then got really excited. My experience with the Hodges counterweight was interesting. When using a lighter mic, I felt the weight more on my leading arm. When I used a heavier mic in Zeppelin, I felt the weight more between my hands than just weighing down my front hand. That's the design, though. Personally, I don't see myself using the Hodges counterweight unless I have a very heavy mic and Zeppelin combination, but everybody's different. I know pros that won't hesitate for a minute before installing it on their boom poles when they're going long outside. Let's take a step back now and talk about KTEC's outstanding customer service. If you were to ask a non-sound film industry person to name a company with really good customer service, they might name names like Apple if you have Apple Care, T-Mobile, Chick-fil-A, Publix, something along those lines. But if you were to ask a sound film industry person, hands down, especially if they're in the United States, they're most likely going to say KTEC first. The reason why can be encapsulated and expressed very well in a fictional story I made up to make my point. If you were to take a boom pole that you just bought from a KTEC 
representative and then turn around and slam that KTEC representative over the head with that boom pole, thus breaking the segments, KTEC's customer service is so good, they would probably repair that boom pole for free because it's under warranty. Their customer service is that good. Now, granted, the KTEC representative that you hit would sue the living crap out of you because that was uncalled for and unacceptable. And they're also not idiots. But you would have a perfectly working boom pole to use when you get out of prison in 10 years. Yes, their customer service is really that good. Admittedly, I did not use this boom internally cabled on set, but I did on my own SoundSpeeds projects. Internal coil cabling any boom adds potential noise if you swing the boom back and forth really fast, but I didn't detect much of that noise with the mighty boom even when swinging fast. You've heard me recommend that the first boom pole you buy be around 18 feet and the second boom pole you buy be around 12 feet. But let the truth be known, I would honestly say that the KP-16 is a one-stop shop that should fit most of your booming needs. Now, sure, it's great to have multiple different booms of different lengths. That way, you don't carry as much weight in your hands from the segments that are not in use at any given time. But I honestly forgot that this boom was over 12 feet long until I needed that length. And it was kind of a happy surprise. I was like, oh, cool. I actually have extra length. I was just about to change out this boom pole and I didn't need to. Now, keep in mind, the last couple of segments do take a little bit longer to actually wear in the knuckles on, but that's to be expected when you don't use them that often. After about a week of use, the coating started to wear just a little bit, but the performance didn't change. So why bother mentioning it? Because I'm nitpicking here and that's something I noticed. Don't look at me that way. So quick summary. I really do like the Mighty Boom. It's light, it's strong, it's springy, it's modular, it's everything you want in a boom pole. But it is a little bit on the thick side if you're used to thinner boom poles, so there is an adjustment period to make sure that you are comfortably handling this pole with minimal handling noise. But I'll tell you this, this pole gives me confidence and I trust it completely, so I would certainly buy one. Oh, and um, if the six section Mighty Boom is a little on the thick side for you, then you might want to... uh. Keep your eyes open for a five-section Mighty Boom. That might be on the horizon, but you didn't hear it from me. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Soundspeeds, and be sure to tune in the future for more deep dives into pro audio gear, most likely boom poles, and of course, sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below, or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.